Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Well, welcome back, everybody, to another show of The People's View. And uh, today we're honored to have Senator Jim Luther with us. And um, uh, kind of, it's kind of unique because of being in the Super District. I got the opportunity to campaign both with him and yeah. with Senator Lambert. So it was kind of good to help. You're the glue. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I like to be the, the catalyst. The catalyst, catalyst that's a better, there yeah. You there you go. But um, we're going to definitely talk about some more issues. He's on different committees than um, Senator Lambert was. So, you know. We don't have to go through our little civics lesson on the senator set up this time, but alongside me, obviously, is Carl Seidel, and uh, we're going to get into some of the issues that are pending right now with the whole uh, state senate. And so, without any further ado, Senator Luther, why don't you, uh, first of all, tell us how you enjoyed your stay so far as a senator, and what you, was it what you expected, and <laughs> what do you think? We'd also like to know what committees you're what on. Commi you're <laughs> right. Maybe I should start with that. I'm on, uh, well, I'm on Judiciary. You're, you're a House Judiciary. I'm Senate Judiciary. We only have four, so we have a, it's the smallest committee in the Senate uh -huh. uh, with some of the heaviest loads, so it's kind of interesting. So we have big shoulders, you know. Okay. So uh, EDNA, which is Executive Department's Administration, a lot of people don't know what that is if they're not. You know, in, that's what we didn't, what, what do they do? What is EDNA? Yeah, do? we really deal with a lot of the stuff that comes through the executive branch, um, department issues. Uh, we ha I remember we had a bill on weights and measures as an example, um, so, or um, the, uh, uh, the pension reform. That, can't, that, you know, that went through uh, mm -hmm. EDNA. Um, and then I'm also on Ways and Means, Vice Chair Ways and Means. So that was actually the committee that I want, most wanted to be on because I just am very interested in what's happening in the business community and unlike finance, which is really the spending side, ways and means is the income, and it's how we can really work with really the environment within the state to foster business growth through the taxation environment primarily. Obviously, there's, there's regulation. That's a different area, the taxation. But as far as my experience, yeah, it's been a, it certainly was a busy year, um, but it was great, and I took, let's see, August off. <laughs> I was so, going to say, we had a very busy autumn, busier we did. than we had the first time. That's nicer. right. We, we did. We had a lot, a uh, lot more going on than I had thought. They said it was the busiest fall yeah. they'd ever seen, and uh, we had a lot of special committees. I was on six, and uh, plus the standing, the other standing committees that I'm mm -hmm. on, like I'm on the uh, Judiciary Board, the Ju Judiciary Retirement Board, because um, I have an investment background, so that that's been uh, interesting to be on. So a lot, a lot going on. Telecom was a big area. I was on mm -hmm. two different telecom committees, and kind of interesting to see how. Uh, what's happening in the in the state versus other states, and and you know learning a lot. There's a lot. A lot what happening. was the big issue in the te uh, telecon? <clears throat> it was to expand broadband in mm -hmm. the state. Um, broadband. A lot of folks really see that as such a critical uh, tool, but mm -hmm. in the North Country, the penetration is is not really very good. So businesses up there, just to say a country in as an example, there's mm -hmm. places there's no you dial up. Yeah. They're doing dial-up. Yeah. So it's like, dial-up? I, I can't remember last time. <laughs> so, and then also cell phone oh. coverage is uh, there are areas in the state, and you would think that. Well, in that's the country. mountains, too. The right. issue is, uh, that was uh, talked about that I hadn't thought about was safety. I mean, what if you break down? You can't get a signal. Yeah. You've got to wait for a motorist. What if you're on a back road like that? The story of that that's woman right. out west mm -hmm. who was 10 days before they found her. So that's... So those are big issues that they, that they talked about. So you really get a sense of what's happening. But telecom, I think, is, a, is an integral tool to economic expansion in the state. So that was something we were really looking at. Did you make any progress? Yeah, in that area or just yeah, in general? In that area. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We, there there's, was a report that came out. And uh, then there's another tab, which is the Telecom Advisory Board, that actually is executing some of these things. So, yeah. you know, so there's some good stuff happening. Yeah. So you got you got in and you you wanted to be on Ways and Means. Now, do you have a favorite? Was that still your favorite committee? I think so because I I have a business background and 
I think being able to really look at the business environment, and a lot of it, as you guys know, does not just happen on the floor, whether it's in the House or Senate, or even in the committees. It's out in the communities. And one of the things that I've enjoyed is out meeting with mm -hmm. businesses. For instance, uh, the Southern, I mean, the, uh, the uh, Small Business Development Center. I just have been meeting with them mm -hmm. recently, and they had a meeting of businesses in Greater Nashua. And to hear what are the issues, and probably the biggest issue was health insurance costs, mm -hmm. is paramount. I mean, they really, those, those sorts of issues. So being able to really have an opportunity to really make an impact, uh, that, that's, I think that's a, that's a thrilling thing for me to be, to be involved in that process. We were able to pass several <coughs> bills that uh, did affect uh, the small businesses. That's right. Uh, loss carry forward. And, uh, right, absolutely. And the uh, amount that they paid in uh, the business enterprise tax. Right, right, so, right, right. And there's more coming, as I understand, that's right. uh, in that's the right. session. I've got a bill that's going to, there's actually two bills. Uh, um, Senator Bradley has one, and then I've got the complimentary bill that's going to restructure governance for S Corp, C Corp, and LLCs. Mm -hmm. Because we have really lagged the region in being competitive mm -hmm. as far as uh, really the governance and really lagging some of the states just in New England. So mm -hmm. to be able to bring that up to date, to attract new businesses that want to say, hey, we want to be headquartered in New Hampshire, I think would be attractive mm -hmm. to anybody. Yeah. And the regulations, too, rules big, and regulations. Absolutely. It's a big one. I mean, there's, there's, there's a big committee. There's one study it. committee right. looking at that. There's a lot of detail they're mm -hmm. going through, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a theme at the state and national level is the weight of regulation on mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can almost understand it really with a Fortune 500. You know, they've got the resources in-house. But small businesses, you think, for instance, I had a bill with the Labor Department. Mm where um, small businesses were really feeling uh, challenged by the Labor Department coming in, especially like, say, restaurants, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. not meeting code. And you're like, I didn't know that code existed. I'm a, you know, I got three employees, four employees. I don't have a staff. You don't have an accountant and all this. So to be able to uh, make it fair, and I worked very closely with uh, the Labor Commissioner to come up with something that was fair to, fair to everybody. Mm -hmm. And he was very amenable to that. And they yeah. uh, were able to pass a law where they had a warning first before that's they the, applied the penalty. Absolutely. That and we thought, look, if, if, you're, if there is real outright uh, abuse, right. that, I, nobody has patience for that. Mm -hmm. But if it's more a sense of, hey, we, this was an honest mistake, give them some time to correct it. And if they've you know, really done things to correct it, then we ought to, we ought to be able to pull back and yeah. let them you know, have their business instead mm -hmm. of really bringing the hammer down. Cause, you know, there were penalties that were coming in on the spot, several thousand dollars. And that's a real... That's a real the, burden for the small... It's a real burden. Yeah. And I think it's a shock, too, to business owners. They're mm -hmm. like, hey, what, where'd yeah. this come from? Yeah. You, know? Give me, you have an example of one of the rules that you guys did away with, or, or the... Um, like, what? One, like one of these things for, for a fine, say, like, what would you do to... Oh, boy. So people it wasn't so much as uh, putting the... Uh, doing away with the regulation is that if it was a minor regulation uh, that uh, somebody didn't know about or somebody just uh, somehow slipped through the cracks, uh, they gave them a warning and gave them like 30 or 60 days to correct it, and then, uh, then they, they had nothing else other than But that's what warning. we just put into place. That's what we just put into place. They'll be looking at the other regulations, the more difficult ones. One of the things that we came across was the fact that uh, uh, there are different definitions for independent contractor. Mm. Now, you know, yeah. That affects That's big right. companies as well as some of the right. small companies uh, that hire independent uh, workers. And if you have Department of Labor with one definition and uh, unemployment security with mm. another definition, what do you do? You can't. You know, can't be both, yeah, one or the other. <laughs> so it, it, there's, yeah. uh, that's one of the things that we have to correct. But we found that there wasn't enough communication among the different agencies. The, the agencies, exactly. You know, another, another area we saw this in EDNA was in the, uh, the trades. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, if you look at uh, plumbing and electrical contractors especially, they wanted to be able to expand the apprenticeship mm -hmm. programs because what's happening is, for instance, uh, the, in the plumbing business, there are very few people mm -hmm. going in to the business. It's kind of scary when you think about it. 
Now that you can't offshore plumbing, you know, <laughs> call up India. Hey, I got a, I got a problem here. <laughs> you know, can we do that over the phone? Sorry, you know, got a pipe broken. Um, and in the electrical area, what they wanted to do was to be able to have, um, be able to work with two apprentices at the same time. So it gives them more flexibility. And we were like, okay, let's see, let's make sure you've got all the oversight in place. Mm -hmm. You're not just trying to play games here. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to be a real win-win to mm -hmm. be able to expand that. But I think the trades, frankly, and this is one of the things that we saw in the Ways and Means Economic mm -hmm. Summit, the trades is really a solid industry. I mean, that's, it's, that is, it's a growing industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the skill sets that are needed in that have increased. This is not just a grease monkey kind of person anymore that's involved in that. Mm -hmm. And to be able to nurture that, I think, is, is really important for and local businesses. And some of the schools, the community service Absolutely. and the technical schools are really pushing programs to get people up to uh, It was farm. bigger when I was a kid. You, you had yeah, a choice. And actually, in some ways, they almost used it as a threat. If you, in Connecticut, anyways. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do well, you're going to go to technical you're school. You're going to go to, yeah. And... Uh, some people went because that's what they wanted to do, uh, but a lot of them went because they kind of weren't making it in the mainstream. But now they got good jobs. I think it's a different world. You know, it's interesting because my wife teaches at National Community. Mm -hmm. She's the senior level coordinator for the nursing program, mm -hmm. and they—that's uh, actually, if you look at nursing, that's one of the highest areas of demand in the U.S. Uh, because of the whole restructuring of medicine, and pretty much every person that comes out of that, they're hired almost immediately. Yep. And that's a two-year program getting your RN. But if you look at the community college, I really think that the role of the community college in general, both in this state and in the U.S., mm -hmm. is, has become a very integral uh, place. You know, especially for young people. I mean, this is one of the things where they're saying that uh, adulthood, that sort of the new trends are adulthood is being pushed back. Mm. So you may not know at 20, 21, mm -hmm. man, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be a fireman, I want to, you know, I want to be a financial whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know, to me it makes a lot more sense starting a community college mm -hmm. program because the debt loads, to me that's the issue. You think about the debt loads in a four-year program, these kids come out with these massive debts, and that is a challenge we have in this oh, state. definitely, definitely. You know, that, that's really a, a being don't basically Don't get me started highest. on that. I still think it's the biggest scam going Okay. <laughs> I really do. I, I mean, I put four kids through now, yeah. plus my wife, and I still have yeah. one to go. Yeah. I'd be doing pretty well for myself. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, yeah, right, right. It's, 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 well, it's like today's high school. You, know, you have to have a four-year degree that's almost equivalent to high school that's diploma. Right. Yeah, it's a, well, you think about it, I mean, look at the, the especially the infrastructure on, on college campuses today. We're talking, I mean, the money is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. yeah, the overhead now, is that terrible. How does that advance mm -hmm. education specifically to be able to get a job? To me, I look at a three-year program to a four-year program. What is your ROI, mm -hmm. you know, return mm -hmm. on investment? You can't tell me that a four-year program, you're going to get twice as much, you know, twice as much. I just don't see it out there. Yeah. And I think it's, we really have to be very realistic about what's happening out there in the landscape because the whole job environment, debt loads, these are critical issues today. You know? Well, what it helps do is support the gray-haired, ponytailed mm. uh, liberals that I like so much that I'm supporting their <laughs> habits and giving them raises. It really makes me feel great well, about that, it. Well, that's really bothered us uh, in the... Uh, uh, public Works Committee oh. when we did the capital budget. Yeah, it yeah. was just the time that the uh, UNH professors were renegotiating right. the contract. And they turned down a 4% raise. And most of the people yeah. I know in the county, we were given 1% raises. Right. Uh, and we just uh, said, hey, you know, you don't get this money automatically. We got to see how what you're doing for the people that you're Absolutely. serving. Yeah. And it just wasn't there. But the communities. The colleges, they really did a good job in asking for their capital improvement. Absolutely. And they contributed some of it, uh, you know, with their own money uh, from that. It wasn't just given to the, the teachers. So I think that uh, they did a good job. Well, That's I it. think Lucille Jordan, you know, or yeah. the president of the local one, she's doing an outstanding job. Just look at the enrollment. Mm -hmm. The enrollment has quadrupled over right. the last few years. That's not by mistake. No, and it's not you know. just because it's lower tuition. They're offering no. a lot of interesting Absolutely. programs. You know what I want yeah. to ask you guys with yeah. we're in the licensing thing? Yeah. I was just talking about this, I think it was yesterday. You know, we, we're going through this whole thing in the House, especially with a lot of libertarians came mm -hmm. in this time. And they don't want any rules, laws, anything. Mm -hmm. So 
What do you feel about um, like hairdressers? Yeah, yeah. This is a big issue for me. <laughs> that came through eDNA, and the next one's going to come through eDNA. Uh, actually, hairdressers are good friends of mine now. I, <laughs> I actually teamed up with the women on eDNA because I think that this, I know there's one bill coming through that deregulates like mm -hmm. 10 different industries. I just think it goes too far. I mean, I, I, I understand the thought, mm -hmm. but I think you've got to look at what is this really doing in these industries. Um, and we had, we sort of kidded around with this fish pedicure. Did you guys hear about this in the house side? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I heard some. I so we we sort of, that. we had a good, a good yeah. laugh about that. But there was a bill that was brought forward in uh, Ways and Means to uh, basically allow these things called fish pedicures, and uh, that is taking your bare feet, putting them in a tank where these fish chew on your feet. <laughs> now they're not piranhas, but they're they they're actually there they're, the they're giving you a pedicure. Yeah. you know, it's like me walking through section one of the house. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this really comes to sort of uh, the you know eastern part of the world, and but there, we ask questions, just simple questions about medical issues, safety issues. And they couldn't really answer those. And, and the, you know, that shouldn't be an issue, should it? Now, they were saying UV, they would use UV, and that would sort of cleanse everything. And we're like, well, we're, I don't know. I, that just seems like that's a little, a little much. And what was very interesting is um, uh, the same day, we also had the, the one on the hairdressers. And there must have been, I'm telling you, 100, over 100 hairdressers. And they all came in, and uh, you know, all this style yeah. packed into State House 100, you know, that room. And it was just, and you could tell they were very engaged in this issue. And, but what was interesting is to really listen to them, and uh, they really had some very valid points. Because I didn't realize, really, a serious hairdresser, somebody who's running a business, they're really concerned about issues around safety, around quality, those sorts of things. And I didn't realize the safety issue, especially with pedicures, when you're working around with your fingernails and mm -hmm. stuff, there, there's a real risk of disease if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're working with chemicals and all of this. And, and it's not like they want to block, you know, these businesses that, that, you know, they want to sort of close the doors and only allow sort of the high and mighty to run this. But they want to just make sure that the clientele understands that there's a level of professionalism and safety. And so I've gotten the same concerns that have come back to me about this bill that's come up this year, which is even broader, covers all these industries. And I think, I think again, there is some, I can understand that the libertarian mindset, Pete, that uh, you know, this is a good idea to sort of lighten the load, but I think you gotta look at the reality out there in the marketplace as to what, What happens, you know? what would happen if, let's say we would take the hairdressers. Yeah. So you start having people who aren't licensed and then they, burn some woman's hair off and she can't, you know, get a scalp burn or something and she has bald spots. Yeah. If the person's doing it out of their garage, they don't have any money to sue them. That's so what, right. what happens? Do they have recourse to the state? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I, was, I had a lot of questions, too, about that. Why, uh, you know, if there's a professional group that certifies you for passing. Right, that's right. Whatever. I mean, I'm a chemist and when oh, I got well, out of college. We didn't want the government to regulate us, but the professional society qualified you. Right. Now, if you became a professional engineer, then the state had an a, a exam that you had to pass mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you presented yourself almost as an expert in the area by being a professional engineer, yeah. and you got certified. But there are lots of people that didn't get anything, and they were doing chemistry work. Uh, so it's, it's a matter of level, I think, of what you're doing. And so I always thought that if you could advertise that I've been so a certified hairdresser or right. whatever, uh, pedicurist, sure. uh, that that would mean something to your customer. But if you're just doing the neighborhood, you know, cutting or giving perms. See, that, everyone grew up like that, though. You said, well, it's well, a, who's yeah. going to bother those people? They're doing yeah. their, well, they're they doing their aunt. Well, they are bothered, or... though, Pete. Somebody's, you think so? Yeah, well, somebody, somebody gets a complaint, you know, I, I don't like so-and-so, <laughs> and she's doing this on the side. Go get her. She's not licensed, you know. So that's what they're worried about. So you got those both sides, is what I heard. But I never really got into it deep enough to find out why can't you come up with something. See, it's it's almost like any. We're going to get into the the good one next when talking yeah. about licenses and everything okay. else. But yeah, I am so sick of changing laws for the minority of the mm -hmm. people affected by it. So the vast yeah. majority of the people affected by it, it changes their whole life. Yeah. So if you took the, the, the licensing thing, mm -hmm. would, you know, I guarantee you, 
it's not so much the the one that's you know going and doing all these people in the public. Mm -hmm. So they're really not bothered by it. The, but the guy, the poor guy that went and spent his money on the license, did all the different things. You know, of course he's mad about it. He had to go through all the schooling. Now you just could go and. Yeah. You know, my friend Anthony used to cut my hair for years. Should I have had him arrested? I mean, it's stupid. Now, the gay marriage thing, uh, of course, that's going to come up, both of us yeah. being in judiciary. Start, yeah, starting now. And I, I'll give my take right now on it. I mean, I said, as I said last time, as you know, I was on judiciary. It's the same thing. It's, I have nothing against the, if, you know, gay, gays in, in general, what they want to do. Mm. But this is strictly a, a traditional thing mm. that... If all the numbers I heard last time, I don't know if they've changed, 1% of the population is homosexual. So you're going to take 99% of the way we've done things for all these years for 1%. And we already had civil unions. We already had everything. And everybody knows this would not have been an issue if they didn't have that, that small um, majority lead last time and a, a Democratic governor who, by the way, said he was against gay marriage. Mm -hmm. Till they had the outside forces come mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. what was it called? It was called uh, six twelve. Yeah, that's right, six twelve. Sure. Um, which all, all six gay marriage by two thousand twelve. And, and right. the thing I found interesting about that, which most people wouldn't think of this right off the face value, the reason they targeted New England is because it's the least, uh, it's the most secular section of the country. And you wouldn't think that, being mm -hmm. but. Yeah. You know how it is because of all the colleges. Yeah. So yeah. all the different social, pro um, secular programs like that, and they did it. They pretty much did it, well, except for Maine. They started with going for yeah. uh, civil unions, and then a year later, after they said that they satis was satisfied with civil unions, they went for gay marriage, which to me I think was uh, hiding in the weeds, change to change the you know the, the whole picture of marriage. But I agree with you, Pete. Uh, marriage, to me, is a very traditional thing. Thousands of years, it's been between a man and a woman. And I think they are taking something away from people who believe that. And that's one of these issues you're asking me off camera. Mm -hmm. One of the issues we're going to face in the House is the large libertarian um, right. population that we have in there. Mm -hmm. They don't want any laws, including gay marriage. Some of the bills right. that were proposed to us right. were crazy. They mm -hmm. want to outlaw marriage period yeah yeah it's yeah um yeah, yeah. so you, again you take something that started out as a good premise mm -hmm. and then it gets carried away mm -hmm. and then you have what you have now mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. do you the bill that's 437 that's that's going to be voted on the house probably one of the first days back um that's what i've heard yeah. so what what's the feeling in the senate is are you guys going to take that bill the way it was i heard some rumors there might be changes made to it there were some things that that um a couple of the senators didn't like, or have you heard? I don't know, Pete. I have not. Uh, we haven't had a formal caucus yet, so there. I mean, there's been some just general discussion, but I haven't heard anything about bringing an amendment, that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it'll obviously come to us in Senate Judiciary first, and I'm sure that's going to be a big hearing. We'll probably be in the, you know, the big chamber, your chamber there for that. Um, but uh, I don't. I mean, my guess is. The, you know, the majority of the Senate is going to be in support of it in general. Uh, what that number is exactly, I don't know. We haven't really done a clear head count, uh, you know, where, that, where that's going to go. Um, I mean, I, 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 in general, I think the bill is, I think it's a pretty fair bill. I mean, it's got mm -hmm. some flexibility to it because your grandfather, your grandfather, the marriages that have happened, you don't roll it all the way back. This is my understanding. You don't yeah, roll you it all the way back. Right. You roll it back to civil unions. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, you know, there's been, uh, I noticed there's some advertising on television now and emails, that sort of thing. That to me, it's not an issue of rights. It's an issue of redefining what has been really uh, the way things have been done for, for you know, for thousands and of years. And where do you stop with it? Right. And that's the, that's the hard thing. I, mean, so, I joke all the time about it. I, I said at a committee one time that a lot of people didn't think it was funny, but I want to lower all the basketball hoops to five feet so then I can dunk. I mean, I always wanted to be a basketball player, but I'm not tall enough. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds ridiculous, but that, how do you keep changing things? By the time you get history books, when they're done with them, you wouldn't even know. You know, George Washington would have been, you know, a yeah. black guy that was a transvestite by the time mm -hmm. they get done with it. So, I mean, yeah, I don't... It's a, yeah, 
Lawmaking, I think if you think about it, it's, it's a very interesting process. I think about another bill that we heard in the in judiciary that came over, which was on the death penalty, you know, that uh, Speaker O'Brien's bill. And it was very, and I'm not sure what the discussion was in the House Judiciary, but in Senate Judiciary, a lot of the testimony was around how will this impact the families of those who have been murdered. Now, I think that's a very valid issue, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is about justice. And it's interesting how, in essence, the concept in society can shift. Right. But you go back to it, now wait a minute, what is the core issue we're dealing with here? And it's, an, you know, how does society execute justice? And uh, it, are we going to just base it on polls? Are we going to base it on, you know, this sort of thing? And I think it's similar in, in this case, is how do we, do we say that this is a moving target? Or do we, you know, put a line in the sand, this, you know, this is where it is? And uh, you can't do that on polls, mm -mm. and I think that's one of the because that's one of the things they say is the majority are in support of this. Now I don't know if you guys noticed in yesterday's New York Times there's a big article about Catholic charities. Um, it's a real challenge for them now with gay marriage because they're not able, their hands are really being tied now in working with. I'm trying to remember the details, but basically, is it adoption or it's adoption. Probably adoption, working yeah. with gay families, and it doesn't give them the flexibility that they have, according to their institution. It really ties and their hiring, hands. Uh, and right, and that's ramifications now. Right. So people talk about there were not ramifications in society. Well, there are, and I think this is this is the kind of thing that uh, you know that you see. It's a big issue, and not just yeah. with the Catholics, it's with uh, others too. I would think so. A and, lot of these organizations. Uh, uh, Massachusetts now doesn't handle their Catholic charities and not handle adoptions. Yeah. They're still yeah. handling them in, New, in uh, New Hampshire, but if we change some of the rules and regulations, you have the same problem. And weren't they one of the biggest ones, Catholic charities for adoptions? Oh yeah. They're they here. handle every, everything. Uh, foster kids and everything, and uh, they were doing a good job at it from what I could tell. And, uh, you know, there are so many people that are looking for adoption. I mean, my oh. daughter just adopted. Yeah. Uh, she had to go all the way out to Indiana yeah, it's, to it's, do. Uh, where does she live? Is she here? She lives in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. Right. Massachusetts. We adopt both our kids. Uh -huh. So we yeah. understand. It's a, it, and, and to make the process harder. Right. Is when it's already challenged. Right. I mean, and this is a win-win. You think mm -hmm. about this. You're, you're bringing children who really want a good home into, to, into families who, who are dying to have a child, you know? It's really interesting when we went through the interview process, because you actually have to go through the district attorney's office, mm -hmm. and they come and they want to see, are you, you oh, know, yeah. are you, yeah. is this going to be a safe home, right? Yeah. And they're... And they're following up afterwards. They, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And he said that what he found was profound is that the families that wanted to adopt, if you put them over here as a group compared to the families that gave birth, these folks would have, basically would, would, have a, would score much higher on the scale of being homes that yeah. would be great for Good kids. Parenting, yeah. Then, now that's everybody else, so it's the average. But he said, look, there are, I look at families over here because what he also does, and this is what keeps him sane over here, is he prosecutes child abuse cases. Mm -hmm. So he sees what happens in families that have these kids, where there's abuse going mm -hmm. on. These are their own kids, yeah. and, and he just can't believe it. What's happening here? So yeah, adoption is a win-win, and to and to put a monkey wrench in there, I think is it's bad for society. Yeah. Well, you don't hear that part though. No, you don't. No, it, yeah. it's you know again, it, it's a very emotional subject, and you yeah. see the people. You can tell right off the bat. You'll see people that you know obviously have a gay person in their family, of course they're for it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's understandable. And I'm not, I understand their, I understand their opinion and their feeling on it. It's just, again, where does it stop? Where do you stop when you start going down this path? If, if you try to make everything the same, mm -hmm. it's impossible. It's not the same. And I, I wish I had more confidence as of how it will go in the house. Um, but again, we have a, a Democratic governor that right. I can't imagine he won't veto, he won't veto it. it. Mm -hmm. So you got to be a two-thirds. I mean, that's right. If you're sure, you know, yeah. that's the number, really. But I think you have to keep on going. You have to keep oh, yeah. pushing because that's what they're doing. Well, sure. They're right. pushing hard for change, and uh, we don't want change. So yeah, it's called Ovid. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. The next governor. Um, yeah. So, other than what's coming up right now that we should be looking for, we talked about some of the rules changes. Um, we talked about judiciary. Well, I think. Uh, well, I just talked. I, I had. I have a couple little bills. You know, mm -hmm. it was funny. I had, I had one rep in in uh, Brookline who said, "You got to have some bills that are just for your constituents." You know. <laughs> so I got. I have one bill. That is a that is a tubing behind boats. This is a big bill, you know. This this is really going to grow industry. But but I've got a guy in my a constituent in my district who uh, works at summer camps, and uh, he said, Massachusetts, you can tow these big tubes yeah. with uh, you know up to six yeah. kids on yeah. them. In New Hampshire, you can't do that. Mm. And, really, I didn't know that. That's right, and the, and the. What it, they don't understand, they haven't defined the difference between multiple flotation devices and a single device that can have more than one person. So basically they're thinking, oh, there's going to be six people out there all on separate, separate lines. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a risk. No, that's not what we're asking for. So this was a, you know, this was a simple one, and, and I think he'll be, you know, be really happy with that. You might be so, surprised. Look how hard it was to limit the speed limit on Lake Winnipeg. That was, oh my gosh. And they're still getting notes on that. I don't think... I think I got more emails That's the most on I that got. bill yeah. of any, yeah. yeah. They're all canned, but that yeah. was... The, I'm, well, the, one side was canned. The, what yeah. they did, though, with me is they... I got a lot of phone calls on that. Oh, did you? Okay. You know, actual right. people yeah. calling me, telling me where yeah. they lived in my district. Yeah, okay. Um, and I had conversation with you them. You just have people that own places up there in one of the <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> they were all going yes. up there. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't. I voted with them on that one. I I thought that it was fine the way it was. That's fast. I went up again this summer. Oh yeah, it is. And my um, wife's right. cousin has a boat up there. Yeah. And we were going thirty, and that sure. thing that's was pretty fast. Yeah. Geez, oh, absolutely. Geez, Especially geez. if you're out in the broads. Yeah. I mean that they, you, it's rough out there. Oh yeah, and that's I think that's the thing. A lot of people because I've I used to have a boat, and it's and it's one thing if you're going you know just going at a nice constant speed. But if you've got traffic and you've got rough water, and then if you have an issue. And if you have sailboats who don't. Or sailboats. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, we did, we did more boating on Squam, which yeah. is, you know, very rocky. So you can't rip out, you know, really open that throttle up as much on. But we came across somebody who capsized um, a sailboat in the, in the broads. Mm. And there were speedboats cutting right th through that area. I mean, oh, sure. I'm like, what is, Come yeah. on, man, don't you see, you know, it's just a sense of these are boating sort of just uh, cordiality here. Mm -hmm. Help the guy And as out. big as it is, when you go, the, when I went this summer, it was in the middle of the summer. I don't, yeah. as a matter of fact, it was, um, it might have been actually been Labor Day weekend. It was, a, like, I didn't even want to go because I was yeah. worried about being there. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it's not as big as you think once you're out there. There's people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. You can't, absolutely. And you see those cigarette boats. You know, coming through, and they're just, you know, they open that thing up, and I'm thinking, is that battery not in the ocean or something? I mean, yeah. that thing, you know, yeah. you probably cut across the lake in about two minutes with that thing, you know? It's like... You know what you're going to yeah. get, though, with that, Bill? We had one my first year in judiciary. It, we called it the dog musher bill. Okay. And what happened was, you know, you have all the land up north, and, you know, most of it is cuts through private property, all oh, these right. different trails, sure. like the Appalachian oh, yeah. Trail and yeah. stuff like that. Right. So what they did years ago is they, they formed a, um, basically you, you are exempt from being sued if you oh. are hiking, you break your leg. Right. They can't sue you. Sure, right. Well, then after the hikers, the you know, cross-country skiers, so well, these are the groups because sure. what they're afraid is the it landowner is. won't yeah. let them on if they're not on that list. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the yeah. dog mushers actually came. So what they did is it went to bikers, to motorcyclists, every to horseback riders. Right? So yeah. now it's every, almost every term we're going to add one more to the one bill. More. Nice. Yeah. Because how do you stop? Yeah. Where, do you, where do you pick on dog mushers? And so, you can't, so they're going to probably say, well, Maybe you do broad categories you'll have five on the tube, then you'll have six on the I tube. Know. You watch. It's, it's like Shall or May. But you know what? Shall and May, absolutely. You never tell especially, you. Especially in judiciary, right? Yeah. Shall and May. Oh, is, that's all it is. Oh my gosh, it's really interesting to, uh, you know, to really, uh, yeah, look, look at that. So, um, Can, yeah. we have a few minutes left. I'd like to shift a little bit to yeah. uh, capital budgets. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the uh, uh, supporting 
our highways and bridges uh, improvements. We've got a big cut in the budget this last yeah. year. Yeah. And I was wondering how you saw that going forward. I mean, I, we have big bridges to, to right, repair. Right. I And, and Jim Roush, Senator Roush, has, has been a strong voice, you know, for that right. in the Senate. I, I agree with him. I think that, uh, and again, I may not align entirely with all of my conservative colleagues, but I, I think that if you look at the... Um, the gas tax, mm -hmm. some of these other things. I think that we have to really be looking at these infrastructure issues. And we're all, I think we're, we're old enough, probably remember the Fram commercials. You know, you pay me now mm -hmm. or you pay, pay me, me later. later. And the problem is with infrastructure, mm -hmm. the longer you wait, it gets much more expensive. And I think you hear the horror stories across the country, how many bridges are redlined. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think it is an issue. And I, I do think that uh, we ought to be budgeting more money towards that because I just think that and I think, again, I think one of the, the prides that we have in this state is, especially in the winter, you know, we've got good roads, but that's going to be harder to, uh, to really oh, deal with. Oh, definitely. They cut time. back on the highway. Absolutely. You know, for, uh, people. Yeah. You know, and uh, they're going to job it out. Hopefully we'll get good service from the yeah. independent people that are doing the job. Yeah, it, but I, I know I'm torn, too. I, I know what the need is. <laughs> I'm not sure where you go for increased uh, income because you certainly it's, got the federal money cut back. Right. Right, and I, but I think we do have to, I mean, I don't think we can, uh, you know, blow a huge wad, but I do think we need to be putting more money in there mm -hmm. than we are. Um, it's, uh, you know, these, these are, uh, I think these are, these are expenses that we really need to, uh, to deal with. And infrastructure, boy, it, 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 you just, it's easy to cut, you know, mm -hmm. in infrastructure, mm -hmm. but... Um, you know, when you're budgeting. But I, I don't think it's wise to. I think we're a little too tight. Uh, I think very now. tight. I mean, we yeah. argued uh, two years ago yeah. about uh, whether to increase the gas tax yeah. or to uh, perhaps uh, set up tolls someplace on some of the booths, some of these uh, yeah. roads. Because uh, they were talking about 101 being a good place to put toll booths. Oh. Uh, but, you know, neither one of those bills got very far. And, you know, I... I, the gas tax, um, you look at the concept of the gas tax. Now, I can understand if, if gas was selling at, say, a, two bucks a gallon and you had like a 40, 40 cent gas, that's really a big chunk. Mm -hmm. But when gas, what it is, and with really relatively a smaller percentage of the gas tax, I think we really need to uh, just be smart about putting that money forward because it's, it's a reality. People know they're going to have to. You know, that's, you just got to, you're going to have to gas your car up, and I think that we've got to pay for these roads. Mm -hmm. We've got to take care of them, you know. And I think we were talking earlier about the bridge, mm -hmm. you know, going over to the airport. I mean, that's a great new addition, and hopefully that's going to bring more traffic to, you know, to, to Boston Manchester Airport. I mean, that's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And what does that cost us now by eliminating the toll? Because you really well, are. It'll yeah. be about $5 million a year that they're uh, saying they're going to lose. And uh, hopefully yeah. people don't realize how easy it is to get around the toll booth. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't quite, right. Yeah, but even if you, if you didn't want to do it, if you're coming from Massachusetts, you're just following the signs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to avoid it anyhow, yeah. just following the signs. That's right. I don't understand. The other thing that I don't get is why more people don't have easy pass. Uh, that's true. That's get true. this. I mean, if you're driving much at all and you come sit, you know, coins, that might coin. I mean, just you zip through, and now we're talking about doing the ones where you just drive through. Right. Yeah. Six. Those are beautiful. You know, if you've been in, I mean, I love that. Yeah, ninety-five. And I would think if we were able to do that and just move the, you know, the tolls down a little bit, where it's not as much of a headache, and people say, "Hey, it's worth getting that easy pass." You know, just do it. Well, that's the toll. That, uh, yeah, the turnpike tolls are really supporting keeping the, to the turnpikes uh, either ninety-five or Route Three or um, the one in Rochester. Yeah, uh, they're they're spending a lot of money on improving those yeah. roads. Yeah, but they don't have any money for outside that. I know that's. <laughs> I agree. That's an issue, and I, so. and I really think this issue of revenue sources is is just is going to continue to be an issue, especially when you have a tight economy. Mm -hmm. I brought along, and I, but we, you know, Carl, you were there at the uh, the Ways and Means uh, Economic mm -hmm. Summit a couple oh, yeah. weeks ago. And a pretty sobering perspective. I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes, but I think that the kind of numbers that we did both in the House and, and the Senate as far as revenue growth mm -hmm. was very 
I think, very realistic. I mean, mm -hmm. to overshoot oh, yeah. that. No, you don't want to do my that. My gosh, we'd you don't be want in to go a really back. bad shape. That's right. And, and I th the House was criticized that the numbers were too low. Yeah. You know, and yeah. now they're looking yeah. pretty darn good. Yeah. And I think you've got to be realistic because we're not coming out of this downturn anytime soon. This is, that, as I say, a very, very slow you recovery. Know, recovery. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you don't want to borrow money because no. you don't want to kick that we, down the road. Well, and that was brought up. Yeah, our debt rate, um, what we've got in this state, is really approaching a level I, I don't feel comfortable about. Mm -hmm. You know, servicing that debt load is is, and it could affect our rating down the road. So I think well, you've got to look at it. All you have to do is change the interest rate a lot and oh. some of those things. Uh, well, and look at it. Now, yeah. Interest rates, we are at historic yeah. lows. If right. we start to see Interest rate increases, it, it, yeah, it, it's going to hurt more. more Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, Senator, yeah. we're just about out of time. So is there anything else you wanted to add that we, uh, we didn't forget anything? Or did you get to cover it all? I think, again, I think um, <clears throat> I know that uh, I think a lot of us share this, that we, we're, we're focusing on really trying to continue to foster economic development in the state. And it has to be thought mm -hmm. smartly. Um, and I think that what we heard um, at the summit really is, is food for thought. And I know for me, as I was sitting there, is I think the only way you can operate in this environment is a fiscal conservative. You, you've got to be wise about how you're spending. And I think that we t you know, what we were able to cut, the 11% cut, mm -hmm. I mean, here like Ingrid saying, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned mm -hmm. that to him when I saw him a couple weeks ago. I mean, you imagine if Washington had done it, actual 11% yeah. cut in their spending versus cut in growth of, you know, whatever, <laughs> which is yeah, a joke. Reduce the rate I mean, of growth. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and I think we need to continue to press on that. But I think New Hampshire has a great story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that uh, I've been working with uh, DREAD um, and hearing great stories about how they're recruiting businesses across the border and, you know, sort of going undercover and going down to Massachusetts and, saying it's so much nicer up here in New Hampshire. But one of the biggest attractants is the natural beauty of the state. Mm -hmm. You know, people would vacation up here and say, yeah, I'm going to move my business north. I just like it up there better. Mm -hmm. The quality of living. I mean, mm -hmm. We have, you know, some of the best in the, in the country. Yeah, a good well, message. I can't thank you enough, and hopefully we can have yeah. you back in sometime. Absolutely. Love to be back. I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about once oh, we get started. we got plenty. Start we're next week. We're, we're waiting when you talk about redistricting for the Senate. That's, that's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're, you'll hear it very soon. Yeah, that's of course, you, you guys have had your fireworks on that side. So. Yeah, so it's your yeah. turn next. Yeah. Yep. Then we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll you, get you and Senator Lambert back at the same time to talk about it. My guess that. is we're going to have some changes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for us this week, folks. Uh, tune in again next week. We'll be back with some more exciting guests. Keep you up to date on what's going up there in Concord and maybe some national things too. Carl, thanks right. a lot. And Senator, thanks Thank for coming you. in. Great Take to be care. with you, Pete. Great to be with you, Carl. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.